Hello everybody, I'm Nicole, and in this video we are going to go over how to handle a snorty horse that looks like this, and then goes to this, and then ends up going to this. Stay tuned, I'm going to play the whole video and break it down for you so you can know how I got her back to a calm state. Okay, so the first part that is important to the following footage that you're going to watch is to understand a little bit more about me and Harley. So this is Harley when she was almost a year old and she was a scraggly little thing. And I gotta tell you that I have been very specific in being sure that she has a good understanding of what the halter and the rope means. And I have curated a specific response that I'd like from her. And that is I want her to be light to it. I want her to understand it. And I want her to soften into it. And so because we have stuck with those principles so strongly through her life, when she got snorty like this in this video coming up, you'll see how she follows the rope really, really well. And this is where I need you all to understand that what I show you that I do in this video might not work out the same exact way for you and your horses as maybe it did for me. The principles are there, the key points are still relevant to everybody, but be prepared, you might need to firm up a little bit more with different horses and in different situations. But I will show you how the preparation has worked out for me and Harley for this instance when she wants to put her tail up and snort and prance around and how it was, I was able to keep her with me and bring her back down to a state of calm. So now I'm going to play the whole video of the interaction that we had. Just watch it and then I will break everything down after it's finished. Uh -huh. So the first principle whenever a horse gets elated like this is to find some rhythm and keep maintaining the forward motion. You'll find that a lot of people will want to stop the forward motion and every time you're doing that, it's not doing a good job of showing the horse where you want the horse to go. And our end goal here is forward and calm. So then we can get back to ground tying because I had originally come out here to do some grooming. So. Rhythmic footfalls, forward and calm. 
The second principle is keeping the horse bent around me so that way the shoulder is not dropping into me. So you'll see here that I do not take my eyes off of her so I can be very aware of what's happening. I use my hand there towards the eye to be a block. Right there she comes around me, keeps a nice distance, keeps the slack in the rope, and does not drop her shoulder majorly towards me. But you can see she wants to look towards the other horses because they are a part of the reason why she's acting this way at all. So I have to show her calm, forward, straight, and follow me. There's the shoulder dropping and see how I can touch the halter and bring her right back around me in an arc. So right there, that's the most dangerous moment right there when that shoulder is coming towards you because they can very easily just barrel into you. So I don't, I didn't go crazy about correcting it because she was able to follow the rope and end up in the correct spot. But if this horse didn't follow quite like that, I might have to use a flag or a stick or the tail of my rope or something to keep that shoulder moving away from me. Because do not be sure to take me very seriously when I say that when that shoulder drops towards you, that is a dangerous moment and that is how a lot of horses lead. The third principle is to remain calm and do not get combative with the horse whenever they are in this moment. In this moment, she is not calm, she is not relaxed, and so you have to be careful that I don't just add gasoline to the fire and create a bigger problem. Now, I will not allow myself to be um, taken advantage of from the horse, but I also am not going to just get combative and rude to her whenever she needs my confident leadership and direction in this moment. The fourth principle is to take the time that it takes. You never know when you might encounter a situation like this with a horse when they really need you to show up for them. Be sure that you're able to take the time that it takes to help the horse get back to that calm state that you're looking for. And you'll see this took all of about two minutes and here she started to feel more calm and so I decided to go out onto the bigger circle and give her more line. But I did not give her more line until I knew that I was that she would be able to maintain herself. She still has some big feelings here, but she's slowly getting calmer. Everything is calming down. And so I'm going to check if she can be still. And if she can be still, then I will go to my grooming. You can see here by the time we were ready to groom, which was just over the course of maybe a maximum five minutes from the moment she first got snorty to now, she has relaxed quite a bit. And in this moment, when I'm trying to groom her, that's what I wanted was her to just be calm and relaxed. So like I said in the very beginning, be aware that your situation might be a little different and be aware that you might need to adjust but I still hope that the principles that I use to help my horse calm down could be helpful to you as well. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below, and if you're interested in more videos like this, please feel free to check out my Patreon, and you can check out my Facebook page for all of my blog posts and writing. Thank you so much for watching.